Hans Archibald. <sighs> My true name? How did you know? <laughs> I can hear the wind blowing in the Mare Javari. I always believed you existed. Will you hand me your old friend's spirit? Guys, what are you doing here? Just a moment, let me let me get up. Ugh. It's weird. I don't know where all my strength's gone. Hmm? Oh, right, yeah. I haven't had time to give you the full details. Well, I made a lot of great contributions to the war effort lately. Fighting <coughs> the Shogun's army at sea, taking on Shogunate Samurai all by myself. Rescuing my comrades from... from an ambush? Things I never would have dreamed I could do when you first met me. If only I were stronger still. The stronger I am, the more I can do for the resistance. Wait a sec. Where's my secret weapon gone? Um... <coughs> it wasn't long after you were made captain of Swordfish 2. I met these mysterious people, said they were with our supporters. They gave it to me and said that as long as I have the will to become stronger, this secret weapon will answer my call. <laughs> it's just like a vision, isn't it? Of course, I, I've never used a vision, so I wouldn't know the difference. Illusion. <coughs> oh God. That doesn't sound very good. So, what's the difference between a, a delusion and a vision? Huh. <coughs> Gosh. Well, I suppose it's not too surprising that a mysterious weapon of unknown origins would come with its risks. I've been getting more and more tired over the past few days, and I have this strange sense of dread. At first, I'd find I was a little more beat than usual after a battle. Didn't think anything of it. But today, I, I got back and suddenly my vision was going blurry. This is a real shame. There I was, thinking I was catching up with you. <laughs> Guess I didn't receive the favor of the gods after all. Hey, would, would you do something for me? When our uniforms are ready, grab mine for me. Bring it back here <coughs> and we can change together. What's that look for? Don't worry, partner. As soon as I've rested up, I'll be right as rain. Right as rain, I tell you. As soon as I've rested up. Pepe. Hey, where are you going? Hey. Captain Dainsliff, Twilight Sword. Back then, I failed you and failed to protect our people. <laughs> no, 
For 500 years, you have faithfully done your duty. To this day, I am proud of you all. <sighs> Conria didn't fall, did it? Since you're still here. Correct. So, no need to revive the homeland. Huh. This is where my father's grave is. Hmm. To be Huh? There's someone there already. Hmm? Isn't that Durbelet? Why would the Chief Justice be here? Huh? Navia? Hmm. My apologies. I should have asked before coming to pay my respects. Don't say that. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, I was trying to say there's no need for you to apologize. I wanted to show my father how much I've grown, but still... I doubt I've grown to the point that even the Chief Justice would feel compelled to apologize to me over and over. In that case, I will stop apologizing for now. Hmm. You really could use some pointers on understanding human emotions, Monsieur Nervillette. In any case, why did you come to Poisson? Hmm. Well, ever since that day, I've been turning a question over and over in my head. Just what is justice, anyway? There was once a time when I didn't want to believe that there could be anything more important to humans than life itself. Oh, rather than that, it's probably more truthful to say I didn't believe humans were capable of resisting the most basic instinct of living things. That they could rebel against their own nature, or consider certain things to be more important than their own lives. Which is also why I didn't stop your father from beginning that fateful duel. I believed that a truly innocent man would never throw away his life like that. That there was nothing, should have been nothing more important than one's own continued survival. But Mr. Callus proved me utterly and decisively wrong. If not for his sacrifice, the Serial Disappearances case would have remained unsolved to this day. Mr. Callus made the choice he did for his daughter, for his associates, and for many people completely unrelated to him. And in the end, from a certain perspective, one could say that he did it all for the sake of justice. A justice that's higher than life itself. So, you asked me why I came here. I just wanted to say my apologies to Mr. Callis in person. I should have noticed all of this much sooner. This regret has filled me with a sadness that has haunted me for days. That high and mighty chair in the opera Epicles indeed insulates one from many important things. Spina di Rosula, thank you so much for your hard work and perseverance. Uh. I'm sorry for being mad at you before. So, you're actually one of those types that's cold on the outside, but pretty thoughtful on the inside, huh? That reminds me of Silver, one of my guys. Sorry about that. Self-expression is not one of my strong suits. <sighs> Didn't I just say you don't need to apologize? seem to have made their peace as well. Let's not disturb them for now. We can wait till after they're done.
Hinata is unable to understand the concept of death. However, it probably remembers when Abatui replaced its parts when it malfunctioned, and how that restored it to an operational state. It's true that Karkata isn't able to think or understand many topics, but it is like a small child that imitates what adults do. So that's why it kept stealing mechanical parts. But it can't repair its owner, no matter how hard it tries. Yes, but the important thing is that it formed the thought of wanting to repair Abatui. No one knows how this thought came to be, but it has even suppressed the instincts that Abatui had installed. If it really is as we've predicted, this research truly will make waves in the academia. It might have been possible to achieve this with ancient technology, but no one has been able to do the same with modern tools. Karkata? Karkata? Can you hear Paimon? Tainari says you're awesome! <sighs> it reached its limit. It hasn't recharged this entire time, nor has it replaced its severely damaged parts. It's a miracle that it managed to hang on for so long. I'm going to confirm that the Leyline Extractor has shut down. Come with me. Let them be alone for a while. Not a lot of people here, huh? Well, given the time of day and the whole situation in Poisson, Paimon doesn't think there'd be a ton of people here visiting graves. Right. That's how things are now. The living are so exhausted that they've no strength to spare any words for the dead. Um, Navia? <laughs> Navia, what's wrong? Sorry, I... I just... Malus and Silver... They won't ever come back here again. What should I do, Papa? Huh? What happened to them? Everyone agreed on the rescue plan, but still... I was the one who initiated it. They were helping evacuate the residents, but they couldn't leave in time. And... And they were caught in the seawater. <laughs> What 
What shall we do? I've known them for so long. And I know they weren't afraid. But... But... I could at least hold a funeral for my father. And I know where he rests. But as for Malus and Silver, they're just... Gone. I just can't... Everything looks so clean after it rains. Even the gravestones. I didn't expect that you'd enjoy a glass of red wine in front of Master Callus's grave. I can understand. Besides, the scenery here isn't half bad. See, it's not just me. I always want to bring something when I visit Papa. Perhaps we might even have a picnic. He wouldn't be angry, would he? Ah, how could Master ever be upset with you, Demoiselle? Yet the cemetery is the home of those who have passed, is it not? Everyone ends up here sooner or later, no matter who you are. Buying yourself a plot in advance, are you? <laughs> no need yet. But when I do, I hope you'll let me be buried beside Master Callus, Demoiselle. Hey, stop joking around. I'm quite serious. That way, it will save us both the trip to see each other whenever you visit your father's grave. That makes sense. In that case, could I be buried on his other side? After all, besides you, Demoiselle, the two of us could certainly be considered Master's closest companions, no? Personally, I believe we fill those shoes just fine. <laughs> Why are you bringing this up all of a sudden? Seriously. All right, all right. I'll remember your requests. But I'd really prefer not to talk about this stuff. And what do you mean by saving me a trip? I'd make the journey even if I had to visit you two somewhere else. I'd promise to let them rest in peace here. But here I am breaking that promise. <sighs> I'm sorry for letting you see me in a mess like this. I don't usually cry, really. Paimon doesn't know how to help you feel better. But... Well... She understands how you feel. I had always thought I could make my wishes come true. But now that I think about it, that never solely relied on me. Many things can only be accomplished with someone else's help. Malus and Silver have helped me so much. But by contrast, I could do nothing for them. I'm so sorry. You can spend as much time as you need here, Navia. We'll stay with you. <laughs> Thank you. Right now, you don't know how much that means. By the way, you can have a look at this. It's a list of victims from the incident that took place here. Obana, Khan, Burnett, Giverny, Francine, Karina, Daisy Ray, Joanville, Julianne, Esan, as well as Malus and Silver. So, everyone else is safe. But still... It's okay. I know what you're thinking. And... You're right. We lost Malus and Silver. But... We were able to save more than we anticipated. The overall outcome indicates that the cost... Was worth it. Right! Don't think that way, Navia! One person might be saved at the expense of another, sure, but that isn't something we should ever consider a trade. Malus and Silver were not the price for saving anyone. They're heroes! You're right. Thank you, Paimon. What you said just now was pretty amazing, actually. I'll remember your words. Oh! Uh... Really? Must 
but not by the Lord of Dendro. <laughs> We've all grown on this long journey. If the purpose of that growth was to return home, then our wishes have come true. Would you lend us your power? No. You knew it would come to this. All the knowledge, language, and emotions that you have learned will be reverted into pure elemental energy. In your new homeland, nothing of who you were will remain. You won't be remembered by anyone. Is that truly the return you've always dreamed of? Lord of Dendro, don't be sad. This is not your home. We go home. Lord of Dendro should also go home. Desires! Awaken! We all nestle under the great tree of wisdom peering out to perceive the world. From the earth and from the rain, we perceive its wonders until we become a white bird to perch atop a branch and finally snap off the most important leaf. Once upon a time, I alone dreamed in this world. In my dreams, everybody would also dream after they fell asleep. Wild and wonderful thoughts would emerge from their minds. Some tumbled to the ground, and others floated to the sky. Connecting all things in the world into one dazzling net. Among a plethora of worlds were numerous smaller worlds. All of fate, finding within the tapestry their brilliant glow. I gradually understood that these indescribable and constantly changing things are the most profound things in the world. Only they can completely repel the madness. Only dreams can awaken consciousness from the deepest darkness. one who posed this question, yet also the one who sought a solution. Saving the world with the dreams of the people used to be my answer. And now, you've also found your own answer, and I shall return all the dreams to the people. Sumeru, may you be blessed tonight with the sweetest of dreams. You're wrong. She's here.
My wish. If you become human, you can reveal your secret to no one. You will face suffering and loneliness. Is this truly what you want?